Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. So today what I would like to do is to automate what's behind me with lava. So let's have a look at what I've already done and see how that's working. So this is the setup. It's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but it's there. So what's happening here is I'm doing some processing dust and the lava is coming out of from this tank in through this pipe into the into the sluice. It uses lava fairly quickly, so that's, in this particular respect, is quite good. And it, well, we'll have a look at this in a minute. But here's a chest, um, a storage drawer, which will hold 64 items. And as soon as this gets below um, two buckets, it'll start to make lava again. And, and that should happen almost any time now, I think. So look, yes, now you can see there's, there's um, cobblestones coming into here because it's now got, and that's producing is coming across here and this should still be working it carries on working the one problem i had we'll have a look at that in a second anyway so this is now going to produce lava and that's going to get fed into this tank which is a store and then it's going to get fed into here so let's look at how i did that so okay so this is the traditional way of doing it or the way i've been doing it. one one chest that holds a cobblestone and for this particular case we've got other bits and pieces in here let's take those out and one um, tempered jar with one jar automation processing block and the tank. So this is the bit that does, does the business, so to speak. And underneath here, I've got a slower blue, blue magenta block as opposed to uh, what I was using over there is the, um, probably I should use it actually, it's the beacon. Anyway, and here was a way to put stuff into the sluice, but I'm not going to do any sluice processing yet. We'll just have a, maybe I need to, I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll twiddle with this as, as time goes on. So instead of putting a chest here, I'm going to replace this chest like that. And what I'm going to put in, in its place is I'm going to put in a, a, sto a storage drawer like this. So we come along here, we just want to put the storage door on the end of this. In fact, you can just see the shape where I want it. So I want to, actually, I just need to click it and I don't have no shift clicking on here. I need to get it in my hand. And then that connects to there. And into here, what I'm going to put is I'm going to put a storage downgrade. Now the storage downgrade basically, um, yes, yeah, it says reduce the base storage to one single stack. So you can only store a stack of items in here. I'm going to press shift click on it as you can see it's only got one stack that will be stored in here you can put whatever we, whatever we like into this but it'll at least store one stack and then onto this i'm going to put a hopper like this and the hopper is going to contain if i press shift right click like this i'm going to it's going to contain the um it's going to be the way that we're going to control the on off so above the hopper i'm going to put if i can get there is without having to use the jetpack it is a cobblestone generator tier one. I didn't do that on the previous one. Oops, nearly got that right, actually. I mean, we can shift click this onto here like this. Now, so that's going to produce cobblestone, which is going to go into this hopper, and that'll go into this chest. So let's go and get the two keys I need for doing this. Well, actually, really, I want the quantitative key, don't I? Because nothing else is going to go in there. But let's just put this on here like that and right click it. So you'll see it's got six, seven, and it's going to produce cobblestone as it gets produced. Put that back again. So we can see how much cobblestone we've got in here. So that's basically coming from the hopper. So we're going to use integrated dynamics to control all this. So that's going to take a little bit of time to explain. So hmm, I'll see if I can do a good job on it. Integrated dynamics, we've touched a bit. And here's the manual. We've got the manual prepared. And we can right click this and you see we've got tutorials. So we've done some of this already, like mineral basics. How we can get it from the from the back to the neck, it tells you about the squeezer, which we've got here, and, and the drying basin, which we've, and it produces blocks of mineralized crystal, which you can then break up to just single pieces of crystal. In fact, it actually tells me I've done those, and I get rewards for doing this. So for each of these we've done, we get a reward for. So we get mineral logs. I'm not going to select those just yet. Um, we'll have a look at the next bit along here. I've got all the bits, I think I've got all the bits prepared that we need. So you do need to make a wrench. Well, actually, I haven't used a wrench too much, and, but we do also need to make a labeler. Now, that is actually important. So the recipe, let's have a look at the recipe for the wrench. It's quite straightforward. It's just these mineralized, crystallized mineral chunks. 
will give a, and the register will give a range. And the recipe for the label is the same, but as a book and quill, instead of being a piece of register, it gives you this label. The label is useful for variables, and we're going to use a couple of variables. So let's start with this one. Now, so what I'm going to get in here is I need, what we first of all, we need is a variable store. This isn't, so that the variable store is this one. And this basically stores variables. So that's two chunks of um, men, crystallized mineral and a some mineral chunks, some blocks, I mean, and a, and a chest will produce a variable store. I think I might have got one of those prepared already. Here we go, variable store. Could have made another one. And then we're going to need some readers. Now we've got different readers in here. We're also going to need a display. So the recipe for the display is two mineral berries, which we've got overflow mineral berries, and these static light panels and an output variable transformer. So let's have a look at go, let's reverse it back. The output is two variables cards with a piston and two mineralized crystallized mineral chunks. This is the output one. Input one is exactly the same with a sticky piston in here, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. And then it needs some static static light panels. So that's three mineral berries plus an output variable transformer plus redstone. So it's it's actually not too difficult. Got those two made. Let's see, I can shift click those into place, but I've already got them already made here. In fact, I've actually got the display panel made as well, so I'll take that. And then we need to be able to read what's in the tank. So we need a fluid reader. This is this one here. And the recipe for that is an input variable transformer. And I said this was a sticky piston, the same as exactly the other. And it gives you four of these. We didn't look at the recipe for variables, by the way. The recipe for variables is a piece of paper with some mineral chunks around it, like that. We could take 24, we'll take those because actually we've got we've got plenty of variables. But we, need, we need these anyway. And then we're going to need some way of having a look at uh, a redstone writer. This will actually redstone write, will write the output here. I've made some other things as well, like an inventory writer, an inventory reader. We don't need those for this particular project. But we do need some logic cable. The recipe for logic cable is basically, again, men crystallized mineral chunks, two sticks, redstone. It doesn't matter which way around it is, we can select either of those. What well, I'm missing two sticks. Just go and get some sticks because I probably would like to make a few more of these. I've probably got sticks in my backpack as it happens, so I won't mess around too much. I forgot sticks in here, got 52. Let's put those into that chest here, and then we can make up the, the recipe for these. So another three won't hurt. Well, it certainly won't hurt. So I actually got an advancement cables for logic. In fact, I don't know why I haven't got that before. Since I've already done that. In fact, if I look, let's have a look. Maybe in the quests, because we have got some quests completed as well. Uh, industrial foregoing. I did a, a dis dissolution chamber. The recipe for this one. Let's click it. And you can see what it is. Click the view recipe. It was plastic, which we basically covered a chest two buckets a diamond gear let's be for diamond gear is this one with a cast iron chunk and then four diamonds around it or you can do it in the server press and that but you have to have this gear die gear working die and the recipe for this is actually a diamond gear plus some in well plates if you're making a lot of these it makes sense to use this i actually have made it just for the, just for the fun of it but anyway that's the, that's the recipe for this and it makes this dissolution chamber the uses of this solution chamber is to make complicated items or other. It's got 17 pages of items. But the one you needed, I needed it for was to make the advanced. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Advanced machine. Let me do a quick look. Go through it. Simple machine frame. It's, I think it's the, the advanced machine frame, which comes after the. So we've got pity machine frame. The simple machine frame, the advanced one. And actually, the advanced one's pretty expensive. If I see it. If I don't see it, it doesn't matter. We'll look at that another day. So I made that. And did I claim the reward for that? I've forgotten if I claimed the reward. Probably didn't. Let's just claim the reward for that. It'll be a random reward. Ring of magnetization. Well, interesting. Another Britannia one. I haven't done much with Britannia. That's the end of the quest. I don't 
not sure if there's a quest for integrated dynamics. I see there isn't, there is no, oh yes there is, down the bottom here. Ah, okay, so I don't, so this was the one that opens up this cable, opens up the rest, so even though I've done some of these, <laughs> it hasn't showed up. On the thing, multi-directional builder, omni-program variables. This is advancement. Wood. It's different things down here. Anyway, let's carry on with this. So what we need to do is we need to read the the value of this particular tank. Let's do it on the other side because we've got more space on the other side. So what we do is you put against this here a fluid reader. So it tells us how much is in there. So you can shift right click it onto the tank. No, did I do the wrong one? Shift right click it onto the tank. And then that goes onto the tank. We want to also put onto, onto this a hopper, a fluid, uh, redstone writer. We can do that un underneath it because that seems like a, a good place to do it. That's display panel, a redstone writer. Like this. And then we need to put down some cables. So what I would like to do is to put the variable store here. We need the variable store. It's just one of those things you need in this particular case. Um, you don't always need it for everything we're doing, but for anything that's got like this with some logic in it will require it. Because the logic is we're going to say is if the fluid, if this fluid here has got more than two buckets, or maybe more than one bucket, then it's going to emit a redstone signal, which is then going to stop the this hopper from passing items into this chest. So we'll do that. And so we need to do, all we need to do is connect these pipes up here. So we would, for example, let's click. I think I can have to shift click it because it opens up an interface on this one. Oh, and then right click that. So now what we can do is we can put a display panel on here. So you can right click the display panel. So that's the first part of it. What we're going to do now is put in into here a variable. So the one we want is we would like to, we've got different things in here. So we've got, when the tank is full, it'll emit a redstone signal. It'll it'll set this to a variable to true, to, to true. At the moment it was false. When it's empty, it's actually says it's, em, it's not empty. That's interesting. Oh, I thought this tank is empty. And when it's not empty, it's set to true. That's interesting. I don't think that's correct. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe it's got something in it somewhere. If it has, oh, it's got a, an amount of 200 watt. Oh, I've got to empty this tank out. Oh, that's a bit of a fill ratio. It should tell me down here. Oh, it's got blood in it. Okay, I have to make a new tank. <laughs> Let's make a quick new tank. In fact, I'm going to make a bigger one than this. Um, I'll, or use a different tank, whichever. Maybe I've got one already prepared. I've got one prepared actually. No, I haven't. Right, I'll be back in a second with a new tank. Right, here's the tank. Well, I'm going to, it's just a basic tank from Mechanism. Let's have a, a look at the uses of this particular tank and we can make a, an advanced tank. I'd actually like to make an ad advanced tank because it holds 28. In fact, I'd actually like to have, make the next layer up, which is the use of that is the uh, an elite tank. And this is using reinforced alloy, which is basically diamonds plus infused alloy will make the, will make the reinforced alloy. It's actually not difficult. So let's just have a look at uses of this and click that in. I've obviously got some in stock here. So now we've got this tank. That holds 56 buckets, which is fine. So now when we have a look, let's break this tank away here. I hadn't realized it's got blood in because you, can you can't really see it. <laughs> That's my magnet not picking it up because I've turned it off. Let's turn it on again. Or press C, whichever. Um, so now we can put this tank down here. And this time it should say it's true. Let me have a look at this. A look at this variables here. Right click this. So now it is empty and it's not. And so it's not. So it's false that it's not empty, which is obviously the case. So, and it also says it is a tank, which if we removed it, of course, that would be false. So it's got nothing in it, right? So what we're going to do is we want to have a look at this fluid amount here. So we're going to put one of these variable cards, oops, variable cards into here like this. But we'll put two in. We'll take these two out. 
to wait a second. Let's not go in. Properties, thank God, they put it in again. Right, it makes two. So they do stack. So we can put one of those into here, into this variable store, into this display panel. So it's now showing a value of zero, which means there's nothing in this tank, which is exactly what you would expect. Do I have a bucket with me? Probably do have a bucket in the backpack anyway. I've got a bucket of lava here, just what I need. If we now put this bucket of lava into here, uh, this isn't won't won't come out of here because it's not configured yet. Well, so now you can still not see it, <laughs> but it should tell us we've got one thousand for one bucket of lava. If we have a look at this as well, if we have another one of these um, variables, it'll tell you what it is. We could actually put that into a total fluid capacity one tank fill ratios. There should be a string. Here we go, lava. So if we want to put take this one here, it'll tell us what's in the tank. So it says lava. We can replace the one in here, in this vet, in this panel, display panel, for the lava one. They get different colours. So red, orange corners means not integers. These are white ones, which is obviously strings or text. A bit weird. Oh yes, it's showing it's got one thousand of lava, and that's supposed to be the representation of lava. <laughs> I didn't use the word lava. I do remember that, it's actually a thing. Let's take that out of... Actually, we'll leave it. Yeah, no, we'll take it out because we don't need it. We can reuse this one. I'll we'll put this one back in again. And then we'll put the other one into this variable store here. Yeah. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create an a variable which is a static variable. Um, oh, no, let's do something else before I do this. Let's label this. Um, let's put this into here. And let's, for some reason, keeping the previous, I'm not sure which one it is, uh, lava amount or amount. We'll write this to this. And this then becomes a variable. And it says at the top, amount. Before, it would say something like a uh, variable card, telling you what exactly what it is, as opposed to this one. So what does this one say? Variable card. So it doesn't, it's called variable card, and this one is now called amount. So we can put that one into here. So the next thing we need to do is we need an integer variable. Now, how do I do that? Just a second. So we need a, um, a, a logic processor, which I have also made. That's NBT Instruct, the logic programmer here. Uh, recipe for the logic program, let's have a look at the recipe for this, is basically one block of crystallized mineral plus uh, a crafting table. It's not actually really cheap. You can then convert that one to a portable logic programmer. We're going to leave this as this one to start with, because this is where we do the sort of, it doesn't have to be anywhere near where we're working, so we'll put it sort of further away. Um, put that over here. And in here you can, you've got different items. So what we would like is we would like an integer or I see you've got sort of like doubles, longs, booleans, operators. Do we actually have an integer? Oh, I see we have an integer. So that's the same color. That's the orange color as you can see in here. What we want to do is we put that integer into here. Let's say it's 1000. Like this. And this is the value of the integer that we want. So this now will have this value in it. It says it's actually called automation on some reason or that I can't let's just change the name of this uh, variable let's get the right tool so what we want this is the um, minimum level that's actually it's the maximum level isn't it before we start making la la um, lava not a very good variable name <clears throat> so we'll put that into here we'll call it that for the time being so we know which what it's called so it says the variable called we write it now it says max lava okay so then we can come along in here and put this into the variable store in fact i need these with me because i need to put these into the programmer before we put them into the variable store so now we can do an operator uh, so what we want to do is an operator and we would like to say if this is less than the max level then we're going to how we want a true value so let's have a look we've probably got less than in here 
not the right one. It's not called an operator. What's it called? It's really a comparator. Oh, it's probably actually just here, in fact. Yes. So it's actually in this list. So you can press the, the standard math. It's a standard computer term for less than. It's just using the, the angle bracket on the left-hand side. So less than. So we say if this is less than, and it doesn't actually use it, it just takes a, a copy, the, the number 2000, then we are going to put this into another variable. In fact, will you reuse this variable here that we've already used here? And it changes its side to, to, to cyan, I think, which indicates a variable. So we can take this variable out of here, and then we can put this into the display panel here. Let's take this out, put this in. It's going to give me an error because it's going to complain that we haven't got this is because the red cross. If we look at this on the top hand side, it says variable ID seven could not be found in the current network and variable ID 10 cannot be found in the current network. So that, what that basically means is this one here has got variable ID seven and this one has got variable ID 10. Because I did a little bit of programming, they, did, they normally start at zero before. So we can put those two into the variable store and that then becomes false. It's false because uh, we have got some lava in here, haven't we? We've got a bucket of lava in here. We can remove the bucket of lava, and that should be then true, which it is. So now we know the logic. So all we now need to do, and this is really simple, let's put that back in here so nothing actually happens when we do it, is we just connect this cable to, to this redstone writer. And in the redstone writer, we just need to put... Um, that variable, that actual, let's put that back in again. Oh, I don't think there's a way to copy variables around, but we'll we'll do the, I do actually need those two back again, don't I? Let's do that. Well, I'm going to repeat the same thing. I should have done this before, actually, so there we are. So if you remember, that's less than. This, this one, so we need, this is less than, oh, I think I've got this the wrong way around. So the if so if the a fluid is less than no that's right the amount of fluid is less than what's the level then we're going to emit an redstone signal basically is what we're going to do so let's put this one back in here I could reuse this variable since we've already used it so we'll reuse this one like that and then we can put this one into here like. Can't do it. I can't do it until it's actually got some cable on it. So we need to put some cable on it, which we'll do in a second. But first of all, put these two variables back in again. Into here, so it's false. So let's just extend extend this network with some more cable. So you've got two ways to go around. Of course, we'll do it this way around, so it connects in that way. And then we can put this card into here that we've just created. And then you've got different ones here. So you will, this one is a, a value. So that will actually emit the resident value of that value. So if you put, say, a value card of here of uh, 10, it'll actually emit a resident value of 10. So what we want to do is we want to put the, we actually you can just shift click it and it will go into the right spot. But this has got the blue corners and this has got the blue corners or cyan corners. So this is where it goes. So this will actually emit a redstone signal of 15 if this condition is true. This is a pulse. It will actually emit, emit a pulse. Strong strong power and is one of the options. I think we do need strong power. because That will make sure that the hopper is, then doesn't release any items. So let's check that. So this should now be true. It's actually false because I've taken the bucket of lava. Oh, no, it's false. Um, da -da, I might have got this the wrong way around. It should be true. I really want this to be true. So if we just take out an item out of here, yeah, it's putting them back into here. So we can't do it that way. I've got the wrong logic. Okay, no big deal. We shall just swap those around. Let's just take the card out of here. And I didn't give it a label either, it doesn't, but it doesn't matter in this case. It's fairly obvious is what it's for. I'll take the one out of here as well. I don't think they'll stack because they've got different IDs. This has got no IDs. These have got IDs, so they won't stack. So let's just set that logic up again. Uh -oh. Okay, so let's do less than. 
or we could probably we can do more than it would probably be sensible to do let's do more than more than equal to let's do that because we've got one bucket's worth in there we'll put this one into here and then but we need the values after to get the values out first otherwise it won't work inventory suddenly got very full so let's do more than equal to which is exactly the opposite of the one so if this is more than or equal to this level here it's going to emit a value of true which is exactly what i want let's take that out of there and then we'll do the same for this one in here like that um and then we can come along here put the two variables back in again and then when we put this in the card it should say true display card true so that's true so this is also true let's test this shift click it in so oh, it does tell you it's true here at the bottom so that's the condition you can test it that way so now we should be able to take items out of here and it stays down so let's just take um a few items out of here they will actually not come back into here at all so we've got five cobblestone because we took it because the cobblestone generator is putting cobblestone into here so that's working so the next thing we need to do is we need to select the recipe which is this one here and we'll run the recipe so it has got one cobblestone in. In fact, it will carry on making this until the cobblestone gets empty. And as soon as it gets empty, this is going to see, this is now showing that we've got lava into here. And the value is still true. And in fact, the value will stay true all the time. So the only thing we've got to do now is to actually get rid of the lava. I've got a grill, I've got a grid in here, a diamond grid. Um, I should put a chest down at the front of it because why not let's put a double chest down here and let's put a chest in front of this one as well like, like this and go and get some uh endstone we'll make some endstone this is definitely not the best way to do this but instant i'm looking for endstone it's actually in here i think and i've got more than that i've got a stack look let's take a couple of stacks and get this to run so that's going to get pumped as you can see into here like this and then going to get fed into this diamond sluice with a diamond mesh on and i'm pretty sure that if we have checked the uses of the endstone if we look for crushing hammering it we'll see that we've got crushed endstone and the uses of crushed endstone in sluicing we can sluice that with diamond over water will produce these particular things so we'll get quite a lot of coarse fruit um the one i've been i'd like to talk to do was the blazing one which is no big deal and this one gives you a little few different items but that, those are the actual items you can do with sluicing i don't there's only one page at that okay so now all we need to do is to set up this here like this And actually, we need to shift right click the output of this like that. And that's going to start lava going through, and then that's going to start making items. I've got crushed and stone in here because I think I've got that wrong. <laughs> oh, yes, and stone doesn't work. I need to use netherite, uh, netherrack. Uh, okay, I shall be back with some netherrack. Right, things have progressed a little bit. I, I put some lava. Um, see, this is now down to five. So, what's going to happen? Is, we started to get some uh, crushed um, netherite to go through here. I should take these crushed endstone out of it. It should crush the endstone for, for us. And then we're going to start getting some sodium dust, which we actually do need. We're going to get some blaze powder, some bloom shrooms, which we probably don't need. Cobalt chunks, hmm, possibly we need that. Glowstone dust, we don't need that. Um, cobalt chunks, uses of those will make the, the cobalt clusters. The uses of those, we hammer it down to cobalt dust. I think we can also do cobalt ingots and the uses of those. Can we make a seed? We could actually make a seed. It's actually not that high as a TIF 4 seed, isn't it? Yeah. So we could make cobalt that way forever. So now it's empty, as you can see. And nothing's going to go into here until this lava tank 
goes down to below one bucket. And as soon as it goes to below one bucket, this little recipe should start keep running. Now, I wanted to explain this to you. If I put the hopper directly onto this pipe, cast iron tube, it would suck out of the hopper, even with the redstone signal on it, the the um, cobblestone, so it keeps making cobblestone. Um, if I did it a different way, this has to be empty. If, there was, if I wanted to lock this up with some uh, mechanism to prevent output, it, for example, on here, it, it, locking it up will stop this recipe, break, it breaks this recipe, and it doesn't carry on. You can see at the moment it's carrying on, saying here's got a cross against cobblestone, saying there's no cobblestone in here, but it's carrying on working like this. That's important, so that's why I did it this way. With this in here so after a while we're going to get some more of this how are we doing with this tank let's have a look here and the reason i chose a large tank in this particular case is because this needs to go lower so i'll be back in a second there's plenty there's plenty of cobblestone in, uh cobblestone another rack in here as you can see so this needs to go down to one less than one bucket so i'll be back as soon as that's down there and we can see what happens so we're almost below that level now we are and you can see as soon as that went below 1000 here this has started to fill up again now i've got a feeling this isn't going to be fast enough to keep up and it's now false because it's less than that bucket's worth i probably should have been over here you can see over here so it's got air in this tank it's, it's producing lava as you can see this is probably isn't fast enough if it isn't fast enough all i'm going to do is make another a beacon and put it underneath here that's now full to 64 and this probably isn't i do remember this not being fast enough to keep up with that so we're back in a second with a beacon actually we can make a beacon together why not it's going to be very quick we've got another stars in here i hope it's going to be very quick so we'll look for a beacon click right plus there's a shortcut for doing this i can't remember what the key is another star glass and uh, obsidian no big deal let's take this out of here and I should be able to simply replace this block without anything else carrying, which should carry on processing. Let's break that. Let's put the block down here, the beacon down here, and it should carry on. Now, if we look at this this time, take a book, you'll see that's going a lot faster. Uh, five times, of, or two and a half times the speed of the previous block, the movement of block. So now this should start to fill up, if I'm not mistaken. First of all, it's going to fill up the sluice because the sluice will carry on running. As you can see here, the sluice is it's going up, I hope. Let's have a look. 7,000. It's going up slowly. That's what we'd like to see. So as you can see, that's going up slowly. When it reaches 12 um, buckets worth, 12,000 millibuckets, it's then going to start putting uh, the lava into this tank. And that's the same as the other process, just a little bit slower because we're not using um, an empowered sluice. Could use an empowered sluice, but then we need to power it up. In fact, the power not needs to be fast actually. So I'd have to make another solar panel. Yeah, it would work under here. So I'll carry on looking at this sluice. So it's nearly there now, as you can see. Oh, we'll just watch it because then you can see what's going to happen. I don't know how long it takes to get there. Probably a few seconds. There we got our first bit that was above twelve. So now it's it's doing it's keeping a book. So this tank should start to get some fluid into it. As you can see, now it's got one bucket's worth in here. It's going to carry on processing, of course, because behind this, this tank is probably now start to will start to stop, and we should see this number going down. Now we've got 63 in here now, so it's now 62, and it's going to start filling up this tank. So there we are. So <clears throat> you've seen the other end of this. So when it gets emptied, this gets emptied. So that's how that works. Obviously, this is only a part of what you can do with um, integrated dynamics. But I thought of something useful for this particular uh, mod pack, so that's what I've done. So that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it and uh, learned something new. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.